And I'm going to start with Shanti Menon, who is here to share her views on the topic, which is uh, the use of tech tools, innovative technologies, and robotics in modern K-12 education. Thank you, Anupa, and thank you, Eldrock, for having me here. Thank you for all your audience for wasting, uh, waiting around, though it's lunchtime. Uh, sorry about that. I think everybody's running late. So quickly getting into the topic, um, I think the whole day's discussion today, every one of those vendors, stalls 1 to 19, have talked about technology being part of our lives all the time. Anupa started with it, starting with the Flintstones lighting our uh, lives up with fire. Every part of our life has to have some form of technology, be it our kitchens, be it our movement to work, be it our livelihood, which is WhatsApp today. Uh, but coming to education, um, I do certainly think that um, all aspects of education requires a huge amount of technological inputs today. A is it brings in faster learning, it brings in faster turnout. So let me just explain that in a couple of minutes uh, in terms of children have different learning styles, as we all know, everybody has different kinds of needs. So technology is an easier way to adapt to those kind of um, learning needs and learning styles. So we have to adaptive programs in every subject today, and I'm sure a lot of them, a lot of these vendors here will be able to offer it to us, um, which helps a child learn at his pace, at his, by his need, um, you know, and his interests. Now, how do we also assess a, uh, a child's learning? I'm talking purely from an educator's point of view, assessment being so important in the whole learning cycle. Uh, technology is the easiest form to give you a feedback which is accurate and quick, which also helps you. And I think a lot of vendors talked about how their you know, assessment feedback can be more precise, which would lead to crisper learning. I said upgrade your skills in sense, teachers have to upgrade their skills because children are very upgraded now. I think Shakti Mandir brought to the education part of it, especially after the pandemic. We are finding so many students like Shakti Mandir and 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 Shakti Mandir explosion of uh, knowledge is another aspect. And just like she said, we have to step up to that. We have to anticipate that the children have a lot more. So I'm talking on two aspects, the knowledge acquisition on one end. So we have to cater our whole planning of our class delivery to, to a state where we know that there's so much that the children know. So we start with, with our typical KWL. I'm sure everybody does that. But a teacher needs to know how to ramp up quickly. So there's a sector of class which is not exposed, but there's a large sector of the class which knows a lot more. So you need to be able to plan your, your lesson plan for that day to cater to both lot. Now, in terms of the unwanted, um, everybody is, you know, talking to schools about bringing in more counselors. But, you know, it's always better for a class teacher to be connected to the child. The class teacher is a mother in the class, and every child from six years to 16 years of the school connects with a class teacher more than anybody else. And it's always better to talk it out openly with them. So personally, in my school, every time I hear a concern of this kind, I instantly talk to the counselor about it. And the counselor, you know, actually, uh, she does a session, but you know, that session is not as good as when a teacher deals with it. So she actually briefs the class teacher on how to talk to the children. Open up and talk to them about it. There's no point hiding behind shy hands anymore. So children know everything, they've seen everything, they are exposed to everything. Let's just accept it.